Crime linkage is the practice of identifying which different offences were committed by the same offender. For example, if you have a whole lot of unsolved burglaries, you want to find out which offences are attributable to the same person. That is because you might have some information about the perpetrator from one crime, for example a shoe print that points to a male with a certain shoe size and weight. See if you could identify which other offences you think are linked to that same person. Perhaps some of those have other information about the burglar, such as a witness seeing that he has a tattoo on one hand. And in this way, you can put together more and more pieces of the puzzle. You now have good reasons to believe that the offender who is responsible for this particular series is of a certain gender, weight, has a certain shoe size which might point to his approximate height, and he has a tattoo on one hand. If you allocate one of those pieces to the wrong puzzle, i.e. to the wrong series of offences, you unnecessarily hinder the investigation, so it is important to link the right offences to the right person. Crimes can be linked through the perpetrator's MO or modus operandi, which is how he carries out his crimes. This can refer to the kind of targets he selects and what he does to those targets. For example, Jack the Ripper's MO was to attack prostitutes in London's Whitechapel area in the East End during darkness and to cut their insides. If another prostitute was poisoned to death in a different part of London during the day, that would not be consistent with Jack's MO and we might therefore regard that as being the crime of another person. People are creatures of habit and if we find a way of doing something that works, we tend to stick with that way of doing it, as we have learned that it is effective. A skilled burglar who knows how to pick locks is unlikely to kick the door down. He is much more likely to continue picking locks as that gets him through doors quietly. So we're looking for commonalities in decisions taken by the offender, how and whom he targets and how and whom he attacks, for example. We also need to take into account progression. A prolific offender might gain at least experience, but perhaps also additional skills during the commission of each crime. When he makes a mistake on one occasion, for example, that nearly got him caught, he might take care to avoid that or prepare for it next time round. As we are looking for both consistency across time, but also progression, it is important to identify in which order the offences took place. Criminals also tend to become increasingly confident as they continue in their offending without getting caught, so they might be willing to take more and more risks. Of course, the most reliable factor to use when linking crime is forensics, so that when you find an offender's DNA at every burgled property, you can safely assume he has been there. MO is another way of linking crimes, but it is not as reliable as geography, which I will introduce next. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this content useful. You can get access to each episode's transcript with key learning points, timestamps and references if you get yourself onto my mailing list. Just go to the main EBP Doctor website on ebpdoctor.com and on the bottom of each page you will find a sign-up form for notifications of new content. Just enter your first name, your preferred email address and the type of organization you work for. You will not get any spam, this is just for me to let you know about new content and for you to get access to all the transcripts.